Hey guys, I am getting back to this Wenge box. It is time to cut the mortises for the hinges. But you will notice I am not in the shop because it is way too cold for that. So we're gonna sit down here in the kitchen and try and get this done. Stay tuned. The first thing I did was mark where these hinges are gonna go on the box. This is entirely arbitrary. I felt that having the hinges there looked good, so that's where I chose to put them. In terms of marking them out, I set my combo square to a particular depth. Obviously, this isn't the current setting, but I mark that on both sides. Then I increase this by the length of the hinge. And so I like having a ruler that is in 60 fourths so that I can know exactly that this hinge, for example, is well is one and a quarter inches on the nose. And so whatever arbitrary number I choose here, I just add one inch and 16 64ths or one quarter. I slide that over and I make my next mark in terms of the depth that I want it in. I am going to have a bevel along here. So I want the hinges to sit in all the way. So again, very simple. I just check the overall depth of these hinges and then I can mark that. I've left the tape here simply because these lines are harder to see in the grain of the Wenge as opposed to the cross grain lines. So I left the tape there just so that I don't get confused and accidentally chop in the wrong place. Um, but now that the tops are laid out, I need to lay out this backside in terms of how deep these hinges are going to sit. So what I'll do is measure the thickness of one of these hinges. These are by Brusso Hardware, by the way. I will put a link to these in the description. Uh, I will take the thickness of that and I will mark it down here and then I can start chopping. To start this process, I need to measure the thickness of one leaf of this butt hinge, and I need to set that on my marking gauge. Now, fortunately, I have a marking gauge that has a micro adjust on it, but it turns out that when you're trying to do this on camera and looking at it through a camera lens, it's a little bit trickier than if you're doing it without a camera watching you. So this is not the most graceful adjustment I've ever made. But again, the micro adjustment on the marking gauge makes this process quite a bit easier and you can really fine tune that to make sure that your marking gauge is at exactly the thickness of the leaf of that hinge. So then I come through and just remove any adjustability from the marking gauge, that way it won't accidentally wander, and I check it one more time to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. One thing to note though with these Brusso hinges is that the bottom leaf is thicker than the top leaf, so I flip this around and you can see that there's actually quite a bit of space there. So if you are ever using these Brusso hinges, make sure that you have to go in and adjust the depth when you're using the bottom leaf versus when you're measuring the top leaf on the lid. That will make a big difference and it will affect your results overall when you go and lay this out and cut your mortise. At this point, I am ready to transfer my marking gauge lines onto my box. But as I mentioned earlier, because of Wenge's grain and color, when I'm making marks with the grain, I can't actually see them 
They just blend in with all the other lines of wet and gaze grain. So by putting this light colored masking tape on there, that makes this process a lot easier for me to do because I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll lightly transfer that marking gauge line, but I won't do it for the entire width of the hinge because I don't want to cut beyond where the hinge goes and I still haven't transferred my marking knife lines down from the top of the box. So I'll transfer those down now. And again, I won't go all the way to the marking gauge line because I haven't put it all the way over. I'll just get close and that will give me an idea of exactly where they're gonna meet. So once I've transferred that over on both sides of the hinge as I'm doing here, then I'm happy to come back with the marking gauge and finish that out. And then once I've done that, I can repeat that process on the next hinge, but I don't wanna bore you guys with this and make you watch me do all of this multiple times. So we're gonna speed through that. At this point, I'm satisfied with the way the layout is going. So now I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is surprisingly still not more to sing out these hinges. Wenge is notoriously splintery. This wood wants to rip any time you cut it in a way that it doesn't like. So before I go chopping these mortises, which would inevitably rip the grain out beyond where the hinge is going to go, I take my chisel and I actually sever the fibers. So I rest the edge of my chisel in my marking knife lines and I don't chop, I just press down. I'm not going all the way down to the depth of cut, I'm just severing that very top layer of fibers and I'm going to go through and do this on both hinge sets and on all of the knife lines around those hinges because when it does come to mortising these out what I'm going to do is take just the top layer of material off and then I'll be able to come in and do this same technique again where I sever the fibers ever so slightly deeper and I'll be able to keep repeating that process until I've completely mortised out the hinge space. If I were to try and sever these fibers all the way down right now, the end result is that I would actually crush them and I would compress the wood around it and that would ruin the actual mortise because it would push the fibers around that hinge space and it would just look very ugly. So it's something that you have to do in steps. Now, alternatively, you could just come in with a router and you could hog out most of this material. I've done that on previous boxes. I don't want to do it on Wenge because again, it just wants to rip and tear and it can be a very fickle wood. When you have the ability to take your time with Wenge and do this by hand, the results speak for themselves. It is finally time to chop these mortises. I know I've made you wait this long, and hopefully you think it's worth it. So with chopping these mortises, I didn't think about the fact that you weren't going to be able to see what I was doing, at least not initially. So you'll notice here that you have a terrible camera angle of how this process is actually unfolding. And that is entirely my fault. But if you give me a minute, I did realize that and I thought, hmm, maybe we should fix that. So now you're actually going to be able to see what I'm doing. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm taking off just the top layer of wood as I'm chopping, and you can tell as I'm peeling that off just how splintery Wenge is. It's not coming off in nice shavings. Wenge is not a wood that is prone to providing nice shavings. But here I am again coming in now that I've taken some of that wood off, 
and further severing those fibers in my marking knife lines along the entire perimeter of this hinge. And once I've done that, then I know I can come back again and I can chop a little bit further in here. And I'm just going to have to keep repeating this process over and over until I've finally gotten myself all the way through this mortise. At this point, we are getting very, very close to where we need to be. In fact, in the moment, I was pretty convinced that this hinge was perfectly fit. But I got it in there, and I felt it, and I could tell it just wasn't right. And if you see right here, as we get the camera angle perfectly lined up, that it is proud by the tiniest bit to the point where it's actually even hard to see it with your eye. But the truth is, your fingers do not lie to you in these situations. You can tell when it's just not right. And I knew that that hinge needed to seat just a little farther down. So I came back and with just a tiny, tiny bit of fine tuning with that chisel, was able to get that exactly where it needed to be. So at this point, I'm thrilled because I know we're there. I know that hinge is going to fit perfectly. And it's a tight fit, even though the camera didn't want to cooperate and focus. You can see me fighting a little bit to get that in there because you don't want any play in that hinge. Because if you have any play, it's not going to line up properly with your lid when you put that on. 
which you can see here at that angle, it is just perfect and absolutely flush with the top, which is exactly what you want. And that is what you want to see when you mortise your hinges. And again, you could do this with a router, but there's something about doing it by hand that for me is a lot more satisfying. And I know without a doubt, I am going to get that absolutely perfect fit that I need for this box. So there you have it guys. That is how I cut a mortise for my hinges. I am going to go through and get the rest of these done on the body and the lid of this box. And then we will come back later for the next step of the process in another video. Stay tuned. Stay safe in the shop or kitchen, wherever you are.